Welcome back to the Mystery Garage. In today's episode, the parts are in for the cabrio. So let's see if this thing starts. Let's get to work. Welcome back to another episode of Mystery Garage. In today's episode, we're gonna to get to work on the 91 EA Edition Cabrio. And for those who don't know or haven't seen this car on the channel, I would suggest taking a look back a couple episodes ago when we picked this thing up. We got into a discussion of, you know, what makes a rare car rare and should we keep this car factory and restore it or should we upgrade it nonetheless? The decision was made to do a bit of both. We're gonna restore the exterior and the interior of this unique car, as well as do a 18T swap on the car. So. One of the biggest things I want to do is I showed you guys that invoice where $9,000, give or take, was spent on, on getting this car you know, up to mechanical speed about 10 years ago. So what I really want to do is see if this engine in this car actually runs. And if it does, I'd like to get it on the road and drive it a little bit uh, before we ever do the 1AT swap. Now, one of the things, again, I practice uh, what I preach is I want to make sure that every car on this channel that can run or is streetable, can be streetable. So I wanna get this car out on the road, have some fun with it. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to see if this car starts. I know absolutely nothing about the powertrain on this car other than the invoice stating that a lot of work was done on the mechanicals of the car, excluding uh, the engine specifically. The transmission had some work done, a whole bunch of electrical stuff, uh, a whole bunch of uh, other mechanical items, um, suspension, exhaust, all that sort of stuff. The engine seemed to be relatively untouched on the invoice. so. Um, I don't really understand or I don't really know why this engine isn't running. I do know the air box was missing and that sort of thing. This is a Digifont uh, Mark 1. So the air box that I had to order in the box is, you know, relatively hard to find because this car was only offered in Digifont in a Mark 1 in this uh, era of Cabrio 90, 91, 92, something like that. Um, so I had to find this specific air box and specific math that goes with this car. So that was a little bit of a challenge to get. Nevertheless, I got it. We're gonna throw it in this car. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of checks on the engine, you know, oil level, see the fuel pump works, all that kind of stuff to make sure before we go ahead and fire this car. But I do hope we can get it running in today's episode. And to show a lot of this uh, stuff is, um, you know, you guys are coming with the, vent the adventure with me. I haven't done any preliminary work on this car. I don't normally on any of my, my episodes, but in today's episode, I literally know nothing about this. Uh, I opened the box just to make sure the parts were accurate to what I need in order to do today's episode, but I haven't done any work on checking to see if I have anything else. If we need more parts, we've got to go get them um, because I'm really just kind of crossing my fingers, hoping that j just this air box and math with a couple, couple finicky things, uh, probably some new fuel, that kind of thing, we can get this thing fired up. If we can get this car fired up, I really want to get it out on the street. Um, so I'll put some plates on it and hopefully we'll get some driving time on it once we get the interior cleaned up and put back in, just to see how the mechanicals work and make sure there's no gremlins in the car that we're not currently uh, aware of. And if all things check out and we have some fun driving down the street, um, then we are ready to go ahead and do the 1AT swap. So guys, stick, stick with that. But for today's episode, let's just see if we can get this thing running. Let's get to it. All right, just to get you guys up to speed, hopefully you watched a few episodes ago, but we did pick up this car from being parked in somebody's garage for 10 years, uh, was not running. Uh, we came, you know, brought it home, we talked about it, um, just about being a unique addition. And what I think is cool about this particular car is it goes to show that there's cars exist that out there that you may look over, or a lot of people may glaze over and not realize just how cool or how rare some of these cars actually are. So picking this one up was pretty sweet. We didn't spend a lot of money on it. Bought this car for $900. Uh, part of it was because the car wasn't running. So today we're gonna figure out exactly why. Um, also last episode, we washed up this car and took out the interior, which is the rarest part of this car, just to start working on cleaning it up. Um, I am way too excited to uh, receive the engine parts and not actually see if it runs. So we're skipping ahead now uh, in just trying to get this car fired up to see if it runs before we get back on the interior and throw it back in after we clean it up. So um, in today's episode, what we're gonna do is take a look at this engine bay. 
So we have a 1.8 liter uh, 2H Digifont car. And when I bought the car, I didn't really, you know, I looked for, you know, aftermarket stuff and to make sure everything, you know, all the rust areas or issues on these cars uh, were relatively rust free. I didn't pay a lot of attention to the engine as far as like what was there, what wasn't, that sort of thing. I can obviously see the airbox and MAF were missing. I asked the previous owner if we had it. He said he didn't. Um, and then you can see some of the, like the idle state air stabilizer is uh, undone. Couple things like that. So I'm not sure what state this engine is. I don't know why it stopped running. I don't know why the airbox is missing. I don't know what they were trying to achieve by undoing a lot of this stuff. Um, and I don't know why they left it. So the fact that they just stopped working on it is a little bit concerning, but you know, People have their own reasons for doing their own thing. So I went out and ordered the correct airbox for this car, which again, like I mentioned before, is actually specific to a Mark I Digifont car. Um, it's a very rare, like thin, small airbox that fits basically right in here. So this is kind of the missing part or all I can see that's really missing from this whole equation. Uh, you can see, sorry, let me get my stuff together here. You can see this is the plug-in that goes onto the side of the MAF, uh, vacuum line that hooks up to the side of the airbox. This hose uh, hooks up obviously to the MAF. Uh, this would then have to be rehooked up. This would be hooked up. So obviously this is what's loose. Um, that was all removed for some particular reason. It could just be, you know, the guy who I bought this car from was more of a, you know, V8 domestic kind of guy. So maybe he was thinking, I, I don't know, that he could do something with leaving the uh, math unhooked or I, I don't really know. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and throw this all back together and just see what happens. I'm going to check the oil levels, check for spark, check clean fuel. We're probably going to have to replace the fuel in this tank because I don't know how long it's been sitting without running. Uh, I do know this car was sitting for 10 years, like I've said many times, but I don't know how much of that 10 years, the, like, was it parked because it, shut down or, or did somebody try and restart it at some point within its life of being parked and it just didn't refire. I'm not sure, but today's episode we're gonna find out. So let me do a bunch of farting around. I'm gonna get this airbox back on the car, um, hook up all this stuff that's undone, and I will check back with you in a few minutes. I got deeply sidetracked, so let's get, get you guys up to speed on what's going on here. Okay, so uh, where did I start? So I started by just kind of clearing out the area for this air box to go in, and I realized that there was a, a whole pile of um, old alarm wiring wasn't actually connected. The ground was, but the uh, positive was cut. So then I chased uh, over across, and I found that the old speaker wire for the alarm, so the alarm siren wire, was sitting here with the siren cut off, and that kind of started to um, have alarm bells going off in my head. Sorry for the pun, um, dad joke, I guess. Anyway, so I started to realize that maybe, maybe, the alarm 
is somehow tied into why this car hasn't started. I still don't know if that's the case, but I wanted to rule that out. I hate alarm systems. I talked about to you guys last episode about how we saw all the wiring dangling from underneath the dash. Wasn't too jazzed on that. So I started just kind of pulling it out to clean it up. And then I decided to jump into it full speed. So I went into the uh, inside of the car, as you guys saw, I pulled out the knee bar and I went ahead and removed all the wiring, cleaned everything up. Um, so what happens is, you know, I'm not a huge uh, alarm guru, but there was like hidden switches and stuff under the dash. There is, uh, undoubtedly this alarm system probably had an immobilizer. Um, and I didn't have any, I didn't, didn't come with any fobs or anything to go with it. And it was all disconnected. So because it has a ignition cut, uh, in the uh, alarm system, I decided to pull it all out. And you guys saw me do some wiring behind the fuse box. That was actually getting out the ignition cut and reconnecting it as it should be factory. And you can see how clean it is um, now. And I didn't bother showing you guys that stuff because every alarm system is different. But look at all that wiring I removed. All this stuff is all alarm related. While I was in there, I actually ended up removing the stereo as well. Um, I just cut off the pigtails so we can maybe in a different project somewhere down the road. Um, use that. I'm not really a stereo guy, but nevertheless, um, all of the rest of this wiring, all of it is for that alarm system. And you can see one of the other con concerning parts was, where is it? Here it is. The module is missing. So because this was wired in between ignition and there's no module, it may never complete the circuit um, because the modules just aren't even there, Not alone, let alone whether they're even working or not. So Having this all removed, I know none of this can be a problem anymore, and that could have been, or could be, and I still don't know, uh, whether that's part of why this car wouldn't start, is maybe the owner who had it for that one year between the guy who had his park for nine when he moved, sold it to the guy down the street, could have never got the fob, uh, possibly, and then he maybe tried to start it or get it running and couldn't figure it out. So I don't know. I'm all speculation at this point, but having this all removed is a huge point in the right direction. That could have been part of the reason why that alarm speaker was missing or the siren was missing, because it should, could have just been always going off and they just cut it out. And that could be because the alarm was always connected or engaged, let's say, as, as an alert. And then they pulled the module hoping they can figure that out, but they forgot that uh, it's actually in line of the ignition wiring. So. Having redone that, we're now looking at a 91 Cabriolet with absolutely no alarm system whatsoever. This is 100% factory. Um, and I was worried about there being some sort of uh, immobilizer. So now that that's removed, I went ahead and you can see, oh my God, is that ever gross? But I disconnected the uh, fuel line from the rail and I cycled the, because um, when you turn on the AC, uh, they turn it to ACC, the pump will prime. Um, so I got to, I just went to the priming function to see if I was getting fuel. Here's a cool tip uh, for you guys who are on your own in your garage to save you a couple steps. I do this all the time. I've already turned the key to ACC on the dash. And then what I do is you guys can see, I have this unplugged. And then what I do is I just put it on and it'll do a prime. I undo it. I, I just constantly do that and it'll pump some fuel. I don't do it too quickly because I'm worried about burning something out, but I just constantly do a little bit of this and you'll get a bunch of prime. So you can see by just how filthy that fuel is. Let me just disconnect it here. Gross. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I am going to drain the tank from the back of the car and I will go get some fresh fuel from the uh, gas station and we will see I'm thinking positive things here. I'm thinking this might just work. Uh, we have fuel, maybe we don't have spark, but hopefully maybe that was tied into the uh, all that mess of wiring that's uh, laying there. However, everything else I've connected. I connected the uh, idle stabilizer valve that was undone before. I connected the uh, all the lines. The only thing that's missing is a little elbow. You can see this one. There's a bottom one that was supposed to come with this airbox that didn't. I'm sure I have one lying around, so we'll get that fig figured out, but that's, um, it's just the bottom of the box to the top for some of the hot air recirculation, so it's not even going to affect the car in the slightest. But anyway, there we are. Let me deal with this fuel situation, and we will try and turn it over.
right, set you guys up right here. Okay, so as you just saw, there you go. As you just saw, checked all the fluids, new fuel, I uh, needed to add a little bit of oil, added some coolant. Hopefully that isn't a waste. And uh, we are, think I think we're ready. I also primed the fuel system a whole bunch, got some clean fuel coming out. Uh, what else did I do? I don't know, I think we're basically ready for the start. Uh, I did hand or manually make sure that the crank uh, rotated. So we're all good there, there's no real issue with that. And I think we are ready for a key start. So let's give it a shot. I left the key on ACC, so it's on accessories, so the fuel is pumped, primed. It scared me at first, but uh, all right, let's do this. That could be fuel that I spilt on the exhaust. Let's pull this car outside and then let it let's let it run. All right, fire up number two. Um, lifters were clacking really bad, so hopefully once it gets some really good oil pressure, that will figure itself out. Now that it's running, which is awesome, um, I'm just gonna let it w warm up a little bit more and I'm gonna do an oil change on it because since it is running, it's probably worth the oil change. So let me just uh, get it running, warm it up, and then I'll back it back into the shop and we'll do a oil change. could be worse, especially if it hasn't ran in 10 plus years. What do we got here? Try to flick up the lights a little bit. I think there's a bit of a gremlin to deal with in the lights, but uh, just over a quarter tank of fuel, no lights on, that's good. Temperature hasn't moved, so hopefully that works. So we'll wait and see. I did hear, <laughs> When uh, it was off camera though, but or maybe it was in time lapse, when I had deleted all the alarm system, as soon as I turned it to accessory, I heard the the Volkswagen door open seatbelt chime come on. I didn't hear that previous when the alarm system was hooked up. So maybe this whole I don't know maybe this whole alarm system had something to do with it. But either way, we'll never really know. I don't think um, everything seems to be running okay right now. I'm gonna let it see. I'm gonna see if we get up to temperature or at least temperature raises. And then uh, I will, I wanna see the fan come on as well. And then if all that checks out, we will go ahead, oil change it, and probably do a bit of a tune up on it. But let's, uh, let's keep going. Yes, the fan just came on. It's running. 
Again, that tick is starting to quiet down, so I think it just needs to run for a little while. Now, I need to go get my redneck racing seat, and let's see if this car moves. All right. Redneck racing seat installed. She's running, let's lower the hood here. I am jazzed right now. <laughs> okay, seating position, terrible, doesn't matter. Let's see if this car moves. Oops, see there we go, that's that buzzer. Wasn't working, well, hmm. Seems like it's maybe something at the door, I don't know. Anyway, ooh, that clutch is stiff. Don't work that baby in. Okay, here we go. Let's give this a shot here. That's the most important part. All right, let's see how we do. I'm too excited here. Everything's uh, everything's running pretty good. I ended up finding a vacuum leak, tighten that up. You want to check for everything and see if it changes the idle. But everything seems to be pretty good. I do see a bunch of rat poo and pee and stuff all over this engine, so it's going to need a big clean. You can definitely smell it burning, which is disgusting. Um, I'm actually putting it through its paces right now. Heat works good. I'm seeing if the AC comes on. But, I mean, I feel like that's a stretch, thinking that it's going to blow cold, but. Would that be a beautiful thing? Right now I'm batting pretty good average, so <laughs> let's wait and see what happens. If this thing starts blowing cold, I might might have a party tonight or something. Okay, well, you see temperature, fan keeps coming on and off, it's pretty good. Uh, what do we got here? Tack work. Oh yeah. Man, this thing is incredible. What a deal. <laughs> Uh, through its pace is good enough. It's not blowing cold, cold. It's, yeah, it's all right. Definitely not AC, but it's cool. I'd say that. Okay, so it's, uh, fans come on two or three times, so let's get in the garage and do an oil change. Well, I guess I never really know if this was all the culprit or not, but at this point, what do I care? Well, I guess that about does it for today's episode. I don't need to show you how to do an oil change. Guys, huge day. Thank you very much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Who would have thought this car would have ran? And actually it was pretty easy. Didn't need a lot of tools, didn't need much parts. I was really concerned. I might have to do a couple trips to the um, parts yard, that sort of thing, get some stuff that we may need. but. Everything worked out, very, very happy, super excited. I actually need to pick up some plates for this car. We need to figure out a driver's seat real quick because I want to start putting some kilometers on this car and seeing how it responds. It is time to uh, figure out mechanically how everything else works, make sure there's no other issues because just after that, it would be time for a 1AT swap. So we're really looking forward to that, guys. Stay tuned. If this is the kind of content you like, highly recommend that you subscribe to this channel. I really do appreciate it. But thanks for watching this week. Super excited. Till next time, take care.